Now we are going to start with a 13 group that is the first group of the P block. So 13 group include these elements. Let us see that, that it includes boron, it uh, includes aluminium, then followed by gallium, indium and thallium, right. Again, boron B, aluminium Al, gallium Ga, indium In and thallium Tl. So these are the elements, these are the, these are called as members of the boron family because the, they actually, the family name is uh, governed by the one which is present above. So this is the typical boron family. So if we talk about uh, that how they occur in nature, so we see that, see that, that the boron occur in nature in the form that is orthoboric acid or as borax. Though it has many more form also, but uh, actually uh, just you need to make yourself familiar with two or three important forms. So boron, the basic form of borons is the orthoboric acid and the borax. Orthoboric acid is H3BO3 and borax is Na2B4O7.10H2. Second we have aluminium, right. The ores of the aluminium, aluminium is the third, third most abundant metal right in the earth crust and uh, like what are, in what form it occurs it occurs as a bauxite ore or a cryolite bauxite is al2o3.2 h2o cryolite is na3alf6 next is gallium as compared to allium the gallium indium and thallium are present in rare amount as compared to aluminium they occur in less but they are less abundant so gallium occur as germanite which is a typical uh, complex sulphide ore that means in which the gallium is present with sulphur and along with that other elements may present like zinc, copper etc. And uh, indium and thallium they are, they, occur, they are very less abundant and they occur as a sulphide ores. They occur in form of combined form obviously combined with the combined to form sulphide ores. Next if we talk about their atomic numbers then boron atomic number is 5. Aluminium is 13, gallium is 31, indium is 49 and thallium is 81. And you know very well how to write an electronic configuration. If you uh, uh, start filling the shells in an order, then the configuration for boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. This is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. Then uh, progressively filling of the another shell 4s2 4p1 5s2 5p1 and then 6s2 6p1 but if we talk about the general electronic configuration this we have already talked before also it is ns2 np1 in the first filling of 2s and 2p followed by 3s 3p then 4s 4p then 5s 5p 6s 6p like likewise you need to fill them but uh, the general electronic configuration is ns2 np1 and this we have already discussed that the inner core may differ but the outer most electronic configuration is going to remain same that is ns2 np1 so now let us start with the physical properties now so the first property we are going to discuss is the atomic radii so this is suppose is a 13 group right so let us say that this is group 1 this is group 1 and group 2 this is group 1 and this is group 2 that means we will be comparing the group 13 with the alkali and the alkaline group so if we talk about the size as we know that as we move in a period as we move in a period we know that the like if I will take an example also like we have lithium here the member is lithium then beryllium and here we have boron right. So if we talk about lithium beryllium and boron lithium is with atomic number 3 so configuration is 1s2 2p1 here it is 1s2 2s sorry this is 1s2 2s1 this is 1s2 2s2 and this is 1s2 2s2 2p1 right. So as we move in a period what, what we see that that due to increase in a nuclear charge right and decrease in a screening effect. So what happens because the, uh, the electrons in the same shell do not screen each other as you can see that here the shell is going to be same. So therefore they are not going to screen uh, the electrons. So that means nuclear screening effect is going to remain same. But we will see that nuclear charge will go on increasing due to ways due which the size will constantly decrease. So that means if we talk about the size, if we talk about group 13 com as compared to group 1 and group 2 in size, so group 13 is small. So you are going to write that they are 
smaller than group 1 and group 2 the reason being due to increased nuclear charge right now if you uh, compare the elements of the same group like if you if i'm going to, if i'm going to compare the members of the same group then we what i see is that boron boron is the like i'm going to write it again let us write here boron this is aluminium gallium indium and thallium right so as we move down like if i write the configuration for boron it is going to be 1s2 2s2 2p6 sorry 2p1 and if i'm going to write for the aluminium it is going to be 1s2 2s2 2p6 10 11 12 and 13 3s2 3p1 and similarly if i'm going to write for the gallium it is going to be 1s2 2s2 2p let us write here because it's not clear here right so it uh, for gallium it is going to be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 right 3d10 and then 4p1 right so what we see that like as we are moving down so as per uh, the expected expo, as per the expect, expectation the as we know that the shells are increasing because here the filling of second shell is there here three and here the fourth shell is taking place so therefore due to increase in the number of the shell obviously the size goes goes on increasing this is the expected uh, increase so what we see that if we compare between boron and aluminium boron is smaller and aluminium is bigger why due to increase in the number of shell but if you and uh, it, this the trend must go in the same way as we move down that means the gallium should be bigger than aluminium and the indium should be bigger than gallium and thallium should be bigger than indium but actually this doesn't happen like in this way it, this, it doesn't happen in this manner why the reason being that as you move down then what happened here like uh, when you move from aluminium to gallium what change do you observe just uh, look at the configuration here there is no d orbital and here the filling of d orbital take place and as you know that due to the, uh, the as the d orbital is bigger in size as the d orbital is quite bigger in size so it does not screen well it does not screen well therefore the nuclear charge will somehow will be more in the gallium as compared to aluminium and due to which gallium is going to be smaller than aluminium as per expectation it should be it should be bigger than aluminium right but due to uh, because here the filling of uh, the, the electrons in the d orbital take place and as we know d orbital due to its big size cannot screen well therefore the nuclear charge increase they are held more tightly therefore the size becomes smaller so gallium is somehow smaller than the aluminium it is smaller than the aluminium but the trend follow the same manner as we move down that indium is bigger than gallium and thallium is bigger than indium due to filling of uh, due to filling of uh, or you can say due to increase in the number of shell so here if you look for the atomic radii and the ionic radii the one exception comes into notice that gallium is as per expectation it should be bigger but it is smaller than aluminium due to filling of electrons in the d orbital and as they are bigger in size they cannot screen well therefore the nuclear charge increase and size decrease but the same trend follow as we move down second we are going to discuss about is the ionization energy right you know that ionization energy depend upon size and size in return depend upon the nuclear charge that means the one which has high nuclear charge is going to be smaller right and it is going to possess high ionization energy this has to be there right so what we see that like if we compare their size what we see that that uh, like if we compare the ionization energy first i'm going to compare it with the again group one and group two so as uh, as we have discussed that boron is smaller in size than group two right so it should possess high ionization energy but if we see their electronic configuration then in this case electron is to be removed from 2s shell and here the electron is going to be removed from 2p and uh, like uh, if if i ask you then uh, then the, in which case the more energy is required you can extract an electron from s uh, shell easily or from p 
obviously you can extract from p easily because s has more penetrating effect p has less the again this follows this kind of order so that means uh, the uh, removal of removal of electron from the p is somehow easy therefore though it is smaller in size but if we talk about the ionization energy then boron is going to get have lesser ionization energy as compared to beryllium or boron because why the reason being that uh, the here the electron is going to be removed from the this thing uh, from the 2p shell and here the electron is going to be 2s this i am talking about the first ionization energy but after that the ionization energy if i talk about the second ionization energy it is obviously going to be higher for the boron because it is smaller in size right now it's time to compare the ionization energy between the group members now what is there that when you move from boron to aluminium because aluminium is bigger then if we talk about ionization energy so its ionization energy is going to be less value but aluminium is uh, sorry it is going to be more because it is smaller and for aluminium ionization energy will be bigger uh, will be more ionization uh, sorry again we will discuss it again I am just going to write it here because it is just all messed up above. So, we have this kind of thing right. So, if I compare ionization energy of boron and aluminum. So, boron is smaller and aluminum is bigger. So, its ionization energy is high and its ionization energy is comparatively low right. But when I move from aluminum to gallium we know that gallium is smaller we have already discussed. So, obviously its ionization energy is going to be higher because nuclear charge is more here we have already discussed due to filling of uh, d orbital that means when we move from here to here there is an increase in the nuclear charge by plus 10 units because filling of 10 electrons occur here. So, obviously ionization energy will be high for it then as you move from gallium to indium then then filling of uh, d and f orbital both take place and the charge exceeds by unit 18 units that means ionization energy is higher again then the gallium. Now, as you move from indium to thallium then it, it also has d and f orbital which uh, screen less because of their big size or because of their diffuse shape they cannot screen well. Therefore, here the nuclear charge will increase and it will increase by 32 units because here the filling of 32 elements will take place as we we'll move from indium to thallium. So, that means ionization energy is going to be highest for the thallium. So, like this you need to uh, explain about ionization energy that when you compare between uh, 13 and the group 2. So, it should be less for the 13, but if the first ionization energy is less for the beryllium that is for the alkaline uh, member. The reason being there the electron is going to be removed from 2s and here it is going to be removed from p and as we know that s has more penetrating effect than p. So, obviously the energy required will be more for the s case and if you compare this as I told you that when we are moving down there is progressively filling of d and of f orbital is being taking place uh, which screen uh, very less. So, therefore, the nuclear charge is increasing as we are going down like from allium to aluminum to gallium it is increasing by 10 units and from gallium to indium 18 units and indium to thallium 32 units. So, so progressive increase in nuclear charge will somehow uh, increase the ionization energy because they will be more tightly held by the nucleus. Next we are going to discuss about the electronegativity. Electronegativity you know that it is tendency to uh, this thing uh, attract shared pair of electron more towards itself and it mainly depend upon size and size depend upon nuclear charge. The one which is going to possess higher nuclear charge is going to possess uh, small size and obviously it is going to be highly electronegative. So, if we talk about electronegativity then uh, obviously if you compare the alkaline with this so because it is smaller so group 13 is more electronegative than the alkali and the alkaline group because of the small size increased nuclear charge. But if you talk about the electronegativity in the same group then boron is smaller so it is more electronegative than aluminium. But as you are moving down we have discussed that nuclear charges goes on increasing. So, when the nuclear charges goes on increasing so obviously the size is decreasing therefore the electronegativity character increases down the group. That means first it decrease from boron to aluminium that means boron sorry I am going to write here boron is like boron is more electronegative than aluminium. But gallium is more, indium is much more and thallium is more 
due to increase in the nuclear charge as we have already discussed. Next we have is an electropositive corrector that is the tendency to lose electrons right. So this depends upon the ionization energy which in return depend upon size and size in return depend upon nuclear charge. So when that means higher is the charge so obviously smaller is the size and high is going to be ionization energy and electropositive character will be less because it will lose electron with difficulty. So as we have discussed about the ionization energy that boron has high ionization energy than, electro, uh, the, than the aluminium. So electropositive character is more for aluminium as compared to boron. But so we can say that electropositive character in, uh, increases the, from boron to aluminium. Then after that we have discussed that nuclear charge is progressively increasing therefore ionization energy is also increasing. So therefore we will see that there is decrease in the electropositive character. That means tendency to lose electron is decreasing as we are moving down because ionization energy increase. Right. So this is all about the electropositive character. Next we have is the density. Density as we know that if we compare the density of uh, group 13 with beryllium obviously group 13 is going to possess higher density. But as we move down then what happened as we move down the density as, as per expectation it should uh, decrease because the size is increasing. But what happens actually as we are moving down there is progressively increase in the mass also and increase in mass is much more as, compa as, much more as compared to the uh, size. So therefore we know that density is mass per unit volume that means it is directly proportional to the mass. So obviously I am telling you that there is much more increase in the mass as you go down if you compare it with the size. So obviously mass is increasing so obviously the density goes on increasing as we move down. Right. So the next we have is the melting and boiling point. Melting and boiling point you know that it depend upon the intramolecular forces that how tightly they are packed and how much energy you need to provide them. So what we have seen that as the boron is smaller so obviously the melting and boiling point will be high but as you move down the aluminium is bigger so that means the aluminium is going to possess less melting and boiling point. As you go down we have seen that size is uh, somehow decreasing because of increase in the nuclear charge. So obviously melting and boiling point is also increasing down the group because the size uh, is they are being due to increase in the nuclear charge they are uh, becoming smaller and smaller and uh, due to their small size what we have seen that their melting and boiling point is increasing as we move down. So this is all about the physical properties of the group 13 elements.